हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे वी बिगिन्स विद द रेग्युलेशन ऑफ आर्टेरियल ब्लड प्रेशर रेग्युलेशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर देर आर थ्री मेकेनिजम्स थ्रू विच अवर बॉडी गोइंग टू रेग्युलेट द ब्लड प्रेशर शॉर्ट टर्म कंट्रोल इन सेकंड्स टू मिनिट्स इंटरमीडिएट टर्म कंट्रोल विथ इन थर्टी मिनिट्स टू अवर्स एंड लॉन्ग टर्म कंट्रोल so there are three mechanisms through which our body is going to regulate the arterial blood pressure short term mechanisms intermediate term mechanisms and long term mechanisms so first we begins with the short term or rapid control of blood pressure in the short term mechanisms or rapid control of blood pressure there are three mechanisms baroreceptor reflex chemoreceptor reflex and cns response first we begins with the baroreceptor reflex before we are going to learn the baroreceptor reflex we must have to know about the baroreceptors what do you mean by baroreceptors a receptor sensitive to changes in the blood pressure or simply pressure these are also known as mechanoreceptors or pressure receptors these receptors are located in the adventitial layer of blood vessel these are present in walls of the heart and large blood vessels these are spray type of nerve endings and stimulated by distension of the structures in which they are located if they are located in the structure of the blood vessel when the blood vessel stretches then there will be the stimulation of the baroreceptors and signals will be go towards the brain classification and location of baroreceptors we are going to classify baroreceptors on basis of their function and anatomical location functional classification includes high pressure baroreceptors and low pressure baroreceptors high pressure baroreceptors are present in the carotid sinus aortic arch walls of left ventricle root of right subclavian artery and junction of thyroid artery with the common carotid artery low pressure baroreceptors are present in the walls of right and left atria and pulmonary receptors anatomical classification of the baroreceptors anatomically we are going to classify arterial baroreceptors and cardiac baroreceptors arterial baroreceptors located in the walls of the arteries in the adventitial layer systemic arterial baroreceptors which are present in the carotid sinus aortic arch root of right subclavian artery and junction of thyroid artery and common carotid artery and another one it is the pulmonary baroreceptors cardiac baroreceptors these are located in the walls of the heart and they are present sub endocardially and these includes atrial receptors and ventricular receptors atrial receptors include atrial stretch receptors and pulmonary veno atrial receptor carotid and aortic arch baroreceptors carotid baroreceptors location carotid sinus so here it is the carotid sinus where the carotid baroreceptors are located an innervation carotid sinus nerve which is a branch of glossopharyngeal nerve which is the ninth cranial nerve afferent from carotid baroreceptors go towards the brain via carotid sinus nerve which is a branch of glossopharyngeal nerve aortic arch baroreceptors location in the walls of the arch of the aorta so here this is the arch of the aorta and these baroreceptors are known as aortic arch baroreceptors innervation vagus nerve from carotid baroreceptors afferent goes via the ninth cranial nerve which is the glossopharyngeal nerve and from aortic arch baroreceptors afferent goes via the vagus nerve which is the 10th cranial nerve baroreceptor pathway before we are proceeding towards the barrow reflex we must have to know which are the afferent efferent and center of the barrow receptor reflex and these are considered as barrow receptor pathway afferents from carotid sinus barrow receptors go to the nucleus rectus solitarius through glossopharyngeal nerve afferents from the aortic arch barrow receptor go to the nucleus rectus solitarius through vagus nerve nucleus rectus solitarius is a nucleus which is present in the medullary portion of the brain stem efferent from nucleus rectus solitarius go to nucleus ambiguus which is also known as cardiac vagal center and from this cardiac vagal center the efferent go to the heart through the vagus nerve 
second effluent from nucleus tractus solitarius go to the depressor area and from depressor area it is going to innervate the pressure area of the vasomotor center so this vasomotor center includes depressor area and pressure area first efferent from the nucleus tractus solitarius goes to the depressor area of the vasomotor center and from that the efferent go to the pressure area of the vasomotor center from pressure area the efferent goes to the blood vessels and another efferent go to the heart and these efferents goes through the intermediolateral spinal sympathetic neurons these are present inside the spinal cord lateral sympathetic chain and sympathetic nerve all right so this is the baroreceptor reflex pathway now the baroreceptor reflex baroreceptor reflex is activated when there is a blood pressure is increased or decreased first we see what will happen when the blood pressure is increased so when there is a increased blood pressure specifically arterial blood pressure there will be stretching of blood vessel walls which stimulates carotid sinus baroreceptors and aortic arch baroreceptors afferent from carotid sinus baroreceptor go to nucleus tractus solitarius through glossopharyngeal nerve and afferents from aortic arch baroreceptor go to nucleus tractus solitarius through vagus nerve now first afferent from nucleus tractus solitarius go to the nucleus ambiguus and it is stimulation of the nucleus ambiguus which is cardiac vagal center once the cardiac vagal center is stimulated there will be inhibitory signals go to the heart through vagus nerve and this nucleus tractus solitarius also stimulates depressor area of the vasomotor center once the depressor area is stimulated it is going to depress the pressure area so depressor area inhibits the pressure area and from the pressure area the inhibition directly transfer to the heart and blood vessel rather than inhibition we use the word inactivation because heart is not inhibited once it is inhibited it is inhibited forever and from pressure area the whatever the inhibition of the depressed area continues transfer to the heart and blood vessel through intermediolateral spinal sympathetic neurons these are present inside the spinal cord lateral sympathetic chain and sympathetic nerve so there will be decrease in the heart rate first thing decrease in the force of contraction and vasodilatation when all these three things occurring then there will be decrease in the blood pressure so whatever the blood pressure has been increased ultimately through this baroreceptor reflex there will be decrease in the blood pressure decrease in the blood pressure that means the blood pressure will become to normalize now the second thing when there is a decreased blood pressure below the normal there will be also decreased discharge from the baroreceptor below the normal so there will be stimulation of the carotid sinus baroreceptors and aortic arch baroreceptors afferent goes to the nucleus tractus solitarius through 9th and 10th cranial nerve efferent from the nucleus tractus solitarius go to nucleus ambiguus which is cardiac vagal center and here in response to decrease blood pressure this nucleus tractus solitarius sends inhibitory or inactivating signal to the nucleus ambiguus or cardiac vagal center and from nucleus tractus solitarius another inhibitory signals go to the depressor area of the vasomotor center once the depressor area of the vasomotor center has been inactivated there will be prominent activity of the pressor area that means depressor area is no more going to depress the pressor area and in turn we can say that there will be stimulation of the pressor area and this stimulatory efferent of the pressor area go to the heart and blood vessel through intermediolateral spinal sympathetic neurons which are present inside the spinal cord lateral sympathetic chain and sympathetic nerve so there will be increase in the heart rate increase in the force of contraction and vasoconstriction when all these things are going to happen then there will be increase in the blood pressure increase in the blood pressure that means once the blood pressure is below the normal then there will be increase in the blood pressure up to the normal level all right so these are the different mechanisms of the barrow reflex when the blood pressure decrease below the normal when the blood pressure increase above the normal then this barrow reflex mechanism immediately comes into the picture and going to normalize the blood pressure
carotid baroreceptor exhibit a great sensitivity to pressure which vary from 50 to 160 mmHg. Baroreceptor responds both to the mean pressure and the pulse pressure. Baroreceptor respond much more to a changing pressure than stationary pressure. Baroreceptors are called pressure buffer system. And these are the rapid regulation of blood pressure. That means when we change our posture from sitting to standing, there will be immediately fall in the blood pressure. And this within a fraction of a second, this baroreflex works and going to stabilize the blood pressure to the normal level. If the baroreceptor reflex has not been working properly, then there will be the condition of postural hypotension. That means when the patient change the posture, Due to baroreceptor failure, the patient is not able to stabilize their blood pressure and hence the patient will be fall down. So this is postural hypotension and baroreceptors are called pressure buffer system because within a fraction of a second they are going to regulate our blood pressure even when we change the posture. Baroreceptor resetting. What does it mean? Baroreceptor poses a property to reset themselves in 1 to 2 days to whatever pressure they are exposed. They fail to maintain normal blood pressure in chronic hypertensives. Baroreceptor system has no role to play for long term regulation of mean arterial pressure. Baroreceptor resetting means if today someone's mean arterial pressure is 100 mmHg. Due to some abnormal condition, if the blood pressure level or the mean arterial pressure level has been increased to 110 mmHg, so there is a one baroreceptor resetting has been there. Before what will happen when the mean arterial pressure is 100 mmHg, when there is a fluctuation of the blood pressure around 100 mmHg, there will be sudden activation of the baroreceptor. Now there is a resetting of the baroreceptor to 110 mmHg. So when the blood pressure is fluctuating around 110 mmHg then and only the baroreceptor will be activating. Alright. So baroreceptor poses a property to reset themselves in 1 to 2 days to whatever the pressure they are exposed. So that is all about baroreceptor reflex. Now chemoreceptor reflex. First of all what do you mean by chemoreceptor? Chemoreceptor is a chemosensor and is a sensory receptor that transduces a chemical signal into the action potential and they respond to decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen, increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and decreased pH that means when the blood is acidic. Location of the chemoreceptors in the carotid bodies and in the aortic bodies. Carotid bodies these are 1 to 2 mm in size located in the bifurcation of each common carotid artery and uh, these are innervated by carotid sinus nerve which is a branch of glossopharyngeal nerve. Aortic bodies these are 1 to 3 in numbers located adjacent to arch of aorta and this innervated by aortic nerve which is a branch of vagus nerve. So here from carotid bodies chemoreceptor upfront goes via the glossopharyngeal nerve and aortic body chemoreceptor upfront goes via the vagus nerve. Role of chemoreceptor reflex is in cardiovascular control. So whenever there is a condition of hypoxia, there will be increased chemoreceptor discharge because there will be decrease in the PO2 level. And due to increased chemoreceptor discharge, first thing there will be the hyperventilation and second thing there will be stimulation of vasomotor center. So there will be peripheral vasoconstriction and there will be increase in the arterial blood pressure. So this is how the chemoreceptor reflex in the condition of hypoxia going to increase the blood pressure. Second thing whenever there is a hypotension there will be increased chemoreceptor discharge and hence there is increase in the arterial blood pressure. So chemoreceptor going to work when the condition of hypoxia and when the condition of hypotension. This reflex is activated when the blood pressure less than 80 mmHg. 80 mmHg it is the mean arterial pressure. Always remember the whenever we are speaking about the baroreceptor reflex, chemoreceptor reflex, we are here using the mean arterial pressure. Reflex become important because it prevents further fall in blood pressure. Now the third one CNS response direct effect on the vasomotor area. CNS ischemic response. What will happen in the CNS ischemic response? 
when the blood pressure falls below 60 mmhg here 60 mmhg it is the mean arterial pressure so there will be decreased blood supply to vasomotor area in the brain hence there will be cns ischemia and so there will be accumulation of co2 and lactic acid near vasomotor area which is going to excite neurons of vasomotor area and hence there will be strong sympathetic stimulation it will cause vasoconstriction and due to this vasoconstriction the peripheral blood vessels are going to be occluded totally for example inside the kidney so there will be immediate increase in the blood pressure here these are the life saving reflexes so blood supply to the brain is more important than blood supply to the kidney so here what will happen the kidney blood vessel has been occluded completely and the blood has been diverted towards the brain if this rise of pressure does not relieve CNS ischemia, neural cells begin to suffer and within 3 to 10 minutes becomes totally inactive. Second CNS response, it is the cussing reflex. When intracranial pressure is equal to arterial pressure, so that there will be compression of arteries of the brain. Hence, blood supply to vasomotor area is compromised so that there will be decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen and increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Respectively, hypoxia and hypercapnic condition has been produced locally so that there will be discharge from vasomotor center is increased because there will be strong stimulation of the vasomotor center so that there will be increased systemic blood pressure. And once the systemic blood pressure has been increased, there will be stimulation of the baroreceptor or the baroreflex has been activated and there will be bradycardia that means decrease in the heart rate. Once there is increase in the systemic arterial blood pressure, there will be restoration of blood supply to the medulla. This effect protects vital centers of the brain. So it is a life saving reflex. Now what is happening in the abdominal compression reflex? When baroreceptor or chemoreceptor reflex is elicited, efferent nerve signals transmitted to skeletal nerves and this skeletal nerves mainly transmit this signal to the abdominal muscle so that there will be contraction of abdominal muscle. This compresses all the venous reservoir of the abdomen so that it is going to translocate blood out of the abdominal vascular reservoirs towards the heart. Increased quantities of blood are made available for the heart to pump and hence there will be increase in the venous return and so that there will be increase in the cardiac output. So this is the abdominal compression reflex.